uh, one of the things, one of the questions I've been asked a lot has to do with brush cleaning. People can't seem to figure out quite how I clean my brush while I'm working. And when I clean my brush, there's a, n a number of different ways to do it. Okay, now say I'm, say I'm, I'm, I'm painting on that tree right there. And so this is my you know, foreground. This is my dramatic foreground darkest tree. Now if I'm, I want to go to these trees back in here. These are a little further away. They're a little lighter and a little bluer. So what I may do is just wipe a little bit out of my brush. I put a little blue in it and I put a little white in it. So I still got that original color in my brush, but I'm adding blue and white so I can get this so I get these trees to go back there. Yeah, that's about right. And so then I can, you know, I can go back like, like that. Now I'm going back to here and see, I didn't even really bother to clean my brush. I'm just doing a lighter version of that color, just a little bluer and a little lighter. So my brush, I didn't even really clean at that time between going from here to here. I'm not doing much of a value jump. The color's a little different and all that. Okay, now I'm going up to that that's actually a color difference. Okay, so now I wipe, I clean, my, I just wipe it out. That way I can get, I can, I'm now mixing into that same color stuff down in here, but I wiped my brush out to get most of that green out of it. Sometimes on your palette, uh, the, the color will look different on your palette, but then when you get it up, it's still not right when you get it up into your, onto your painting. So there, so there, so see, from here to here, I just wiped my, I cleaned my brush. I just wiped it off once and then got that bluish color. Then I wiped it out again and did a little lighter version. Then I wiped it out again, but you notice I haven't cleaned it in the thinner. I went back, I got all these purples in. Okay, now I'm coming down, I'm doing these lighter greens. So now I'll probably just, you know, give it a really good wiping and I'll come back in and, and get some of this stuff in. Now, on the other hand, when I go to the sky, usually in a painting that I really clean my brush. I either really clean my brush or I get out a brush that's already clean. And then I'm going to get some white that is brand new white. I don't want any contamination in my white. And then see, I can start getting into these areas in my sky. So, so now, even these, these purples up here in my clouds, I, that's a clean purple. This purple in my mountains is probably a little bit, there's a little bit of my cool mud in that. They're just neutralized just a little bit, but not in my sky. And you notice in my sky, everything in the sky, this is my darkest value in the sky. And it's nowhere near as dark as my lightest values in the landscape. The, the sky is kept light so that it's, that provides the light for the rest of the painting to run on. So. Three ways of cleaning my brush. One is I wipe the old color out and I and but you know leave leave a lot of the color in, but I you know wipe the old color out and I you know mix some of the new version of that color. Uh, the other is that I don't even bother wiping. I just go to the next color, uh, and then when I get to the sky, I really really have to have a clean brush. I, not only do I have to have a clean brush, mix with clean color and clean white but I don't even touch the edge of these things. I come right down, I leave a little bit of a halo. Then when I'm finishing the painting, I come back in and paint that back into the sky. I know a lot of artists who start with a fresh color every, almost every brush stroke. You know, they're a real color purist. I'm not that way. I'm, I'm more interested in getting the overall mood. And every color out there is gonna be have some reflected light or something, to, you know, some relationship to every other color in the landscape. So I, do, I don't ever really clean my brush really good until I get to the sky. But in the sky, I always clean my brush totally before I start the sky. Okay, another question I get a lot is, is, on, is on holding my brush. People watch, watch how I hold my brush. And I know from teaching a lot of classes, typical student is going to start holding their brush like this and they're going to try to use it like a pen. If, if I hold the brush like this, that tip splays out as soon as it hits the canvas. It digs up color that's underneath and, it, and you can't get any little sharp points with it. Now, and my range of motion is very awkward. It's, it's hard to, 
it's hard to move the brush around. Now, if I hold the brush like this, see, I can now I can I can sharp, you know, I can play with the play with it in the paint, sharpen it like I would a knife, and I can get you know just this really nice little when my hand's steady, I can get this nice little sharp edge to my trees. Bring those down. I, I you know, I, so I got the sharp edge I can use, and it the edge tends to stay sharp much longer than the tip would. I can also use the broad face of the brush if I want to cover some area. I can go up and down. I can do side by side. I can, you know, side to side. I can, uh, I can, you know, I can, I can use the tip when I actually need to use the tip. You know, sometimes I want some of this color to splay out a little bit. So I can use it that way. There's just so much, so many more things you can do if you hold your brush like this. Now, setting that habit is really difficult. Uh, what I do in my classes a lot is just every five, 10 minutes, I say brush check, how are you holding your brush? Then you slowly get in the habit of holding it. And I notice most of students, when they start to hold their brush like this, they hold it like this. And this gives you way too much control. All your, all your brush strokes get really contrived. Over time, over the years, as I painted, my, my hand has moved down to the tip of the brush. So a lot of times I'm holding the brush with my thumb and three fingers, and then my little finger just manipulates it in some ways when I have to. So, you know, now I, very often I'm barely holding the brush, but get in the habit of holding it like this. If you've, if you've got a way to set an alarm when you're painting, about every 10 minutes, have some beep that goes off that reminds you to check how you're holding your brush. The, the sooner you can get past this hurdle, the faster your, your paintings will make progress, if that made sense. Okay, okay, another question. How much paint medium do I use? What the paint medium is for is to make, is to increase the flowability of your paint without thinning it so much that it runs. The, the rule of thumb is, you, you know, you, you've, you know how butter gets the consistency of butter sitting on the counter in your kitchen? You know, it still holds together in a cube, but it's really soft. That's kind of the creaminess you want your paint. Now, every tube of paint is going to come out a different creaminess, especially if you use, you know, more student grade pigments because they have more filler in them. What you want to do is find a place, find a sweet spot with your, with the flowability. Find a place that you you like that consistency of paint, and then you add liquid, you add your paint medium to get the paint to that flowability. Like right here, I've you know down here I've got my cool this cool mud is pretty thick. There's not a lot of flowability to that. So you know if I'm it's going to be a real thick impasto. Now sometimes I want that, but what I'm going to do here is put just a little bit. You know, I just put a little bit in there and then I smear it around. See how much more, see, it makes it a little more transparent and makes the paint flow a lot better. So I can put it in there and then I, if I have a little too much, I can put a little more paint in it. And, you know, I, I just want to get the flowability right. Uh, the, the liquid glaze can also be used if your style of painting is, is laying glazes over glazes, like a very old traditional way of painting. Uh, the, the, this is used to mix your paint so it will dry faster, so you don't have to wait a month to put the next level of glaze on. What happened here was I took a new painting and I dropped it jelly side down on the floor. So I have to take a clean paintbrush and pick all these little, these little uh, flecks out of the paint. If they're really tiny, you can just embed them in the paint and forget about it. If you notice, though, I started with this light, these lighter areas, get down here, and then I just keep working to darker and darker areas. Looks right there. That just about does it. So now what I'll do is pop this in a frame. So if you drop one of these jelly side down, just uh, take a dry paintbrush and go to work flecking all the picking all the little flecks out of it. And I wonder how I did that. That's not a lizard and crimson, that's blood. <laughs>